Cash Flow Diary Podcast, Episode 561. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast, the podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leveraged streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. Ooh. All right, everybody, how are you doing? Hopefully things are going well. Um, for those of you who I haven't met before, uh, welcome. My name is Jay, uh, CEO of Cashflow Diary. We are going to be answering your questions today because that's what we do every Tuesday. I mean, we've been doing this for quite some time. Uh, that answering your questions is what I mean. And we do our best to make sure that all of our students, yourself included, uh, get the opportunity to make sure that they never get stuck somewhere because we don't want any of our students to ever feel like they are stuck in the process. Because all of you, as I've said before, I say again, we're in the process of becoming, right? It's a proverbial caterpillar, butterfly, etc. cetera, where we're, we're all transforming in various different ways. So here's how this works. Um, for those of you who are watching inside of our Facebook group, oh, that's right. I got to pull, <laughs> pull your questions up uh, on the phone because that way I can make sure that I see them. So for all of our existing students inside, if you're watching inside the Facebook group, I'm going to have your questions here on the phone. Uh, for those of you watching other places, uh, just type your questions in the chat and we'll be able to pick those up. Or if you want to be super awesome, do us a favor, give us a call, uh, call in. Two, where's the number go? There it is. It is 417-352-2274. Again, 417-352-2274. What that will do is it allows me and you to converse, to have a conversation, to talk about whatever it is as it relates to business, real estate, short-term rentals, et cetera. Because at the end of the day, um, I mean, honestly, it, if you don't do anything different, <laughs> then what are we doing here? But that's my goal. My goal is to inspire you, help you uh, be willing to take those risks that you have been unwilling to do. But and sometimes it's just simply answering a question. So uh, I think many of you, you know how this works. You've been here before. Uh, this is not your, your first time per se. So we would definitely love for you to get on the line 417-352-2274 and be nice to Megan when you <laughs> when she picks up, answer her questions because she has the power to keep you offline. So if you're not nice to her, she might boot you. You don't want that to happen. So anyway, uh, I want you to go ahead and, uh, like I said, call into the number. That would be great. And I'm going to do uh, our best to take questions um, from some of the chat in the Facebook groups. And let me pull up the, the other chat as well. Oh, wow. we got a number of people here today. Mark Hill. <laughs> he said that this is funny. Uh, I just, I just, I appreciate you guys letting me know. He says, we're here. That's it. Uh, I kind of like it. Makes it simple. Makes it easy. Um, Ron. <laughs> okay. So Ron is uh, referring to, this is a great question. And that's exactly, I, I did that on purpose. Okay. So for those of you who saw the title I, I, and the title today, what I said is uh, do this one thing to add a zero, okay, to your income. And then Ron says, which side of the decimal, which is the, which is such an important question. Uh, for those of you in the US, I mean, on the left side, for those of you watching overseas, I mean, the left side of the comma, okay? So either way it goes, we're talking about the left side of the decimal or the left side of the comma. Um, I hear you. Uh, and at the end of the day, that's a great question, Ron. And we're going to totally answer that. And I'm going to do my best to illustrate that uh, as we go today. So that is definitely one of the things we'll be talking about. Um, who's this? I don't know this name. Uh, Alice. That's a new name for me. So welcome, Alice. Glad that you are here. And then let's see. Candice. Um, 
Let me see. Candace Terry says, hi, Jay, your brother Delvin put me on your podcast and I have to say that I am learning a lot. Awesome. Delvin, thank you. And Candace, welcome. <laughs> so uh, there it is. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time. For those of you who don't know, yes, we've been producing a podcast. We're well over 500 episodes and, and then some. Uh, we have those available wherever. I wanted to say wherever fine podcasts are sold, but that's not true. It's whatever podcast app you choose. Is the, We're probably there. Just type in Cashflow Diary or go to cashflowdiarypodcast.com. You definitely will be able to, to pick that up there. Um, Carol, how are you? I see Daniel, what's going on? Um, and then we have a question here and I think it's Mayor. Oh, oh my goodness. We have a number of people also uh, on the line as well. So this is good. So we'll be able to get some questions going and I still forgot to pull up the Facebook group. Give me one second. I'm going to pull up the Facebook group right now because so, I'm not going to forget about you guys. I don't want to be that guy. Um, Laura, someone help Laura. I see her in the Facebook group, but she's like, am I missing Jay live now? Yes, Laura, you are missing it. Uh, I am live right now. I'm in the Facebook group though, Laura. So you, you should just be able to refresh or scroll. Whoops. There it goes. Uh, one second, one second. And come on. Is that it? I just want to see the group. There it is. Got it. I see all of the group questions right here. Or at least I think I see the group question. There they are. Got them. Excellent. So what is that? Mark, how are you? He says, keeping it lively. St. Clair, what's going on? Uh, St. Clair says, oh, he says we have the best theme music. Thank you, St. Clair. Uh, it, it literally takes hours upon hours uh, to find and or make the music that you guys uh that you hear so this is good uh where do you get your music from uh the tracks today came from epidemic sound um i don't and and occasionally sometimes you may have actually been listening to something i made so that's a whole nother story shelton what's going on in hawaii how are you and tiffany nicole great i love it she says hey jay i signed our lease for our second unit last week and you're looking at your third one this week so it, it sounds like uh, Tiffany is all about adding a zero to her income, and she's trying to make that happen. So I can't blame her at all uh, for, for any of that. All right. So let's get to one of the questions on the line here. I'm not quite sure exactly. I got a lot of them to choose from. Uh, I see this person was waiting the longest, so we'll go with that one. Oh, <laughs> uh, hold on. Uh, Umer, we're going to come back to your question. So I didn't forget you. Don't, don't, don't stress. And okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So I'm not sure who this is, uh, but uh, caller, you should, uh, you're calling from Laguna Niguel, I believe is the area. And who do I have the pleasure of talking with? Uh, Hi. Hi. Hi, Dad. Dad? <laughs> Who is we're, this? We're in the car. Jasmine. Come on. What are you... <laughs> Why do you want to come on? Ask, we have a question. Okay, go... Okay, you have a question. Go. So, yeah. for everyone watching, this is my 11-year-old daughter who decided to call in today. Were you guys here when my mom called in? Anyway, yes, honey, what's up? Um, How many units... Do you have, and how long have you been in this process? Okay. Uh, we currently have uh, 37 units. And did you say how long we've been in the process? Yeah, yeah like the process of getting more units and stuff. Like, no, like, like, like the business. Got it, got it. That's actually a very appropriate question for what we're going to be talking about today. So I, I told it, you. What's that? What'd you say? I didn't okay. Yeah, so yeah, that's a very appropriate question because uh, there's when you say how long have I been in the process, the the process of becoming someone who can run business and all of those things that's been quite some time, darling, quite some time because you, I can you could trace it all the way back to the time that I I had our first uh, our first very very first business. 
uh, if you wanted to. So I could say I've been in the process for almost 15 years. When Ayana was little, that's exactly right, because that she was actually part of the reason for the process beginning is because I wanted to be able to, you know how sometimes I either pick you guys up from school or drop you off or uh-huh. all that other stuff. I wasn't able to do that uh, a long time ago. And I wanted to be able to pick her up and drop her off and that type of stuff. So what ended up happening is I had to find a way to earn money without having to be physically at work. Is that cool? Yeah. Awesome. So now with that being said, I'm going to go get to some more people. Is that cool? (laughs) Okay. Thanks thanks for calling. Bye. Bye. Oh, that's so funny. Um, So who out there has children? that have a cell phone. Anyway, moving on. Uh, I believe the name is William, William in Fullerton. So let's try that and see how this goes or not. Oh, nope. Someone from North Carolina, I see. Yes. Yes. So Jay, Jay, you got Taylor from North Carolina. How are you, sir? Hey, Taylor. I am pretty good. It's not fair letting me making me follow your kid because it's not going to be anywhere near as cool as that was. So, uh, Dude, I didn't even know. I was like, wait, what? I, it's like, come on. Yeah. So, anyways, but at least you had a real question. <laughs> no, no, it's good. Hey, um, I actually, and, and to be fair, I don't actually have a real question. Um, I just want to call in and let you know that uh, I, I view you as one of my mentors. I read uh, your book when I first got started, and um, now it's literally the first real estate book I recommend to anyone that's getting started. So, uh, wow. I wanted to call in and just say thank you for all you give. And uh, if you're ever up in Charlotte, I'd love to uh, you know, have you to one of our meetups or something and without putting you on the spot now because you don't have to respond. But uh, if you're you ever up Char- here, we'd love to uh, host you. Did you say Charlotte? Yes, sir. As in North Carolina? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'll be back out in Charlotte, I want to say sometime in Q1 of next year. And if uh, send an email into info at cashflowdiary.com and um, yep. I will work around figuring out how to participate in help in any way I can. Awesome. We we have a mutual friend and I won't drop a name, but he's on the intro. So uh, I thought it was interesting to hear him as you were coming on day. Again, thank you for all you do and all you give. All right. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Thanks for calling in. That's awesome. Yep. Now for Bye. those of you who are wondering uh, a little bit about what, what he just said, there's a, um, it, the, he mentioned a book that he recommends which is, uh, he said, his the very first book, real estate book, that he tends to recommend for people. So uh, I can't not show you now that um, the book Cash Flow Diary, 10 Steps to Creating Wealth in Any Economy, uh, is there. And that's the book he was referring to. The Audible uh, version, so I will tell you this for sure, the Audible version has material that has never been released anywhere um, and, and I don't do all of the voice cause that I learned a hard lesson there. That's hard work. Uh, but it's definitely, uh, some of the voice and you hear my wife, you hear a number of us inside the audiobook. So, uh, feel free if, if that's something that you're inclined to talk about. I definitely appreciate that. Taylor, thanks for calling in and let's see who do we have anyone. Okay. Um, I see. All right, cool. Well, I've got one more caller, and then we will get to some more of the questions. And for those of you, if you're like, dude, I got a question, I want to call in, cool. It's uh, uh, Here comes the number, 417-352-2274. And Lorena, how are you doing, ma'am? Hey, Jay, how are you? So far, so good. What's going on? How uh, can I help? I, yeah, I have a two questions. Uh, okay. Um, so right now I try to hook up with my booking dot com, uh, with uh, with the rest of the Airbnb and home away. Uh, okay. So I have a question about the pricing. So in the beginning we have Airbnb and home away, and yes, I hook up with uh, uh, Price Lab with Airbnb okay. directly, and home away. We doing the price with the market makers, which is a home okay. away uh, internal. So right mm-hmm. now, things that we have to do in Booking. dot com, and it looks like we have to go through the price from Logify. Is that correct? So if we have to do that, 
then we have to redo all the price again for hook it up with a larger fly directly and the price lab a uh, price lab with the larger fly and the and the larger fly will go will will give the price for Airbnb and booking dot com. But the problem is how do I uh have a larger fly ignore home away and just give Airbnb and booking dot com and you can order the home away. Got it. So um, which version of the Logify API are you currently using? Uh, it's the latest one, I believe. Okay. So let me ask you this. Did you specifically apply for the beta program with Logify or no? No, I use uh, uh, basic. Uh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, so you think basic, basic doesn't send pricing to home away, so it will automatically ignore it. So am I supposed to do in the professional now or how does how do I that's the, I'm still that's using the, the basic system. I'm still using I, the basic because the professional is currently in beta and yeah, I'm still using the basic. Now we've applied for the beta. We haven't fully configured it because I'm going really, really slow because I don't want things to get messed up. So um at the moment what you're doing is exactly correct. You want to have Logify uh connected to booking dot com. Uh, as you do, and then you also want to have that connected to uh, Airbnb, uh, and you want to get your pricing direct to Airbnb from Price Labs, but also have Price Labs go over to Logify. So what you're doing is so, 100% exactly, exactly so right. So I can just, yeah, so they will ignore home away, right? Because yes. uh, because my is correct on the basic. Uh, correct. Also that if my um, my Logify is in one account, Price Lab have a several account. Uh, they give me the error message of uh, some this thing were in another account. How do I yeah. overcome that issue? Do, when you email Price Lab, they can fix that for you. Did you talk to? Did you actually send them an email at their support? Yes, I did. I haven't okay. get any answer back, so I was thinking I probably get answer back quickly. You, no, it, then, there's yeah. actually a configuration that they have to change inside their software in order to make that possible. So you have to wait for them. Okay. I've had an issue. That's why. Okay. Okay. Cool. So that can be fixable. I have a one more question that is from real estate. Okay. And Last ATM. one. Because I got more people. Come on. Yeah. Very quick. Yeah. Very quick. So I currently have a prospect that is have a, uh, like 100 units. Uh, okay. uh, multi-family, and we want to yep. combine with the ACN together. The problem is, after five years, when they sell the property, how are we going yes. to structure the deal right now in order for that uh, kind of uh, how the transition go in five years if they want to uh, sell the property and and where's the ACN back then? Then how does that account transaction? Those are two completely separate lines of revenue, which have their own. That's basically that. It's the same thing that would happen, like when uh, I bought a commercial building. The commercial building had a cell phone tower. Uh, initially, both of those things were together, but then they were sold separately vis-a-vis -vis the contract. So that's literally down to the contract and how those services are signed up for. So the main thing you want to make sure then is that you use a separate entity. For each of them, if you want to make it really easy, use two completely separate entities, one for the building and one for the services, um, and that should keep it very separate. Does that make sense? So the entity of the services, once they sell it to another owner, that service entity so will they, transfer over, or can we keep it? No. Oh. They can keep it. They can transfer it. They can do whatever they want to do with it. I see. I see. Okay, so it's a completely it. separate asset. Does that make sense? Got it. Yeah, that, cool. that, that makes sense. Thank you no so problem. much. No problem. Thanks yeah, for calling in. All right. Uh, let me get a couple of more. I see some more people who have called in. I will get to you, so I have not forgotten. Uh, I just want to make sure, though, that I get some of the people who are right. I mean, you guys are blowing up the chat today, which I like. <laughs> so this is good. All right. So let's see what we've got here. Um, Let's see. Oh, wow. Uh, hi, Tiffany. Like the beard? Nope. Anthony, the beard is actually going away later today because I am speaking tomorrow in um, Pasadena. 
I'm like, where am I speaking tomorrow? I'm speaking tomorrow in Pasadena. And interesting that you bring that up. Um, I'm going to hit on this small little piece. So one of the things that I've said uh, the, in the title of this particular one, I said, do this one thing to add a zero. OK, and here, here's here's what I will say. You and I, all of us, we will never out earn our personal growth, period. We just won't. Meaning if you are how you to some degree, you've heard it said how you see yourself. That that's literally that self image. Right. I had a friend one time who told me I'm not a six figure guy, meaning he was talking he was referring to himself. He's like, I'm not a six figure guy. I don't know how to do six figures. And that statement in and of itself is, is part of the challenge. Um, and but part of the solution also is not just saying different things or, you know, out loud about yourself, but beginning to believe them. Said another way, you and I will not out earn our personal growth. Uh, you heard my daughter earlier ask, <laughs> which was crazy. I did not put her up to that. Um, she, what, how long have we been in the process? Part of the process is personal growth, a, an intense commitment to it. And intense can be relative, you know, to whatever, however you look at it. For me, intense means two books a month, you know, and, and, and it's meant that and meant, means things like that for a long time it, it all, or podcast. You, you're consuming the information for the intent of using it and becoming a bigger, better, better version of yourself. And it doesn't have to be just business because uh, you, you, you have many facets to your life. However, uh, everywhere you go, there you are. Right. And because of that, one of the things that um, I guess really important to know is that with that commitment uh, to personal growth, means that, that maybe sometimes it, it, there's, time, there's additional time involved, there's additional money and resources involved. And, when, and as I continue to go through this process, I'm reminded of something that one of my many mentors would say is that, that I didn't know or didn't understand the value of an idea. And so what, what does that mean? Any idea, I don't care what it is, any idea given to you. So you guys are calling in or writing in, you know, answering your questions, giving you ideas. That idea has a certain level of value for Lorena that we, we were just discussing, right? Um, the, and ideas can be had in many different forms. So obviously you can get a book and read it. There's a certain level of transmission of that idea. Uh, you can attend a seminar. There's another one. You can be in a coaching group. There's another. You can have mentors that are physically in front of you and far away in various different ways. Here's my point. I'm saying all of this to say simply – that what you need to do in order to to make sure that you, you are becoming a bigger, better, badder version of yourself is not just collect ideas, but implement them. Right. And one of the things that I know that we at Cashflow Diary don't do, we, we like don't have information in courses that are specifically designed to help you. It, on the personal development side, when it comes to the technique and the understanding and the sales process and becoming the, all of those things, we can assist you greatly. But when it comes to becoming a bigger, better, badder version of you, we, we, that's not something that we do. However, I know people who do, and many of you, uh, you know, are going to be, you probably been, you may have received the emails, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. But we are going to be doing a presentation with one such individual who has been able to help. <laughs> I, it, it's hard to overstate, right? Imagine you, you currently are a quote unquote five figure person, but then you go to become a six figure person and then you become a seven figure person. You're in the process of becoming all the time. All of us are. But yet, if you don't want it to take 15 years, and you would rather have it done in a much shorter, compact, uh, concentrated amount of time, maybe you don't have 15 years. You're like, dude, I need to do that now. Great. That is, again, the entire reason why he and I together are going to be hosting this Thursday at um, cashflowdiary.com forward slash action, a presentation around get more faster. Literally, that is the idea, Right to accelerate your own personal growth process. And what happens here is that the majority of us, we don't realize 
what might be in the way that is preventing us from doing it. So you, you say to yourself, okay, Jay, I've read the books. I've done these things. I, I got it. I understand all of that. And I'm saying do more because you still haven't achieved the result. Stopping what you started isn't going to assist you. But what will help and what has helped me and continues to help me is making sure that I make intentional time for improving me. Helps me become a better father, better husband, uh, hopefully a better friend. I am learning so much. Like, uh, and then again, as many of you guys have known, as we've talked about, um, it, it is a shock to one system to discover at, um, at my age, how old am I? <laughs> I forgot, 44. <laughs> you know, it was like, like a year and a half ago. Um, we're discovering that, hey, you're autistic and you have ADHD. Like, oh my gosh. And that in and of itself, just understanding that, beginning to understand that and how that has affected business heretofore and how it has changed interactions and relationships since. Uh, also makes it all of these things taking time to become to, to understand yourself what's in the way and you could have in you all of us we've got blind spots that we're not aware of here's my point when you're able when you're ready to take on that enemy that's been in front of you for a long time what you're going to do is you're going to find a way to seek out the information you need and implement it one such way that I'm telling you to do that is go to cashflowdiary.com forward slash action. Brian Matson and myself, we're going to be there to assist you, okay, to take you along the road of what it takes to get the job done. We're going to highlight some of the things that you may not be thinking about, some of the things that you think aren't in the way that might be in the way. And at the end of the day, we're going to, it, he's going to be working with a group of individuals who are ready to literally transform because it is a transformation process, which by default means it's not going to, you can't learn it as a three day boot camp. It is something that happens over time, right? You can't lose all of the weight you want to lose in a weekend and you, we you, changing the habits, actions, thought patterns that you have doesn't happen in a weekend either. I was just with a friend of mine and he was just remarking how, Two years ago, his tolerance for things were completely different than they are today. And specifically, we're talking about his tolerance for leverage and or debt. Just understanding how that has actually helped him grow his business in a completely different way because he's developed a different mindset. He's been able to open and see different things. And on the other side of that, he's approaching seven figures. I can, he'll get there soon, <laughs> right? But understand... Two years ago, that was not something that was quickly or anywhere near as quickly uh, in, in his realm, but it is today. And it's because of personal development. It's because of books. It's because of showing up to Q&As and asking questions and doing things like this. Now, with that out of the way, let me also get back to answering some more of your questions and giving some ideas about what can do. Do we have any more? Okay. So let me put the call. I'm going to put the call in number back up there. So if you want to give us a call, feel free to do that. Uh Oh, did I? Okay. I did it right. Hello there, entrepreneur. This is Jay Massey. I know that if you've ever gone over to the site, cashflowdiary.com, you may have asked yourself, where on earth do you get a domain name from? Especially as you are beginning to build your bigger, better, better business, you need a web presence. You need the email address. You need a way for people to contact you electronically so that you can stop doing the at gmail.com game. Well, the good folks over at GoDaddy have definitely supplied us with every domain that we have ever used. So what I want you to do is I want you to go over to trygodaddy.com forward slash cashflow diary. Again, that's trygodaddy.com forward slash cashflow diary because it's a quick way for you to get set up to capture your domain name the exact way that you want it. They got easy search functions. And most importantly for you is that you'll be up and running today. As I said, once you get started, stay started. Don't let small little obstacles of how to get your own domain name going stop you. So again, go to trygodaddy.com forward slash cash flow diary and let's get back to the rest of the story. Um, what is that? Yes, uh, that is new music. You guys have noticed that is new music. That's great uh, that we've got. And then where are we? Sean, Jay, the same sofa bed. 
the same sofa bed that you put in all your units, is it custom made or from a particular website or store? Sean, um, as you guys know, and as I tell everybody, we, uh, the designer uh, has, we allow, in this case, Latani to have control over that. And it is the custom made every time. Because remember, part of the customer that we're serving are those that are, <laughs> we'll say larger, meaning typically over six feet, uh, et cetera, because, um, one size does not fit all. That, that's all I'm going to say there. And Rebecca, <laughs> right? Rebecca, that was funny. I'm like, I'm expecting a question and then it's my daughter. So that's pretty awesome. Um, second question. You said in a listing review that you no longer use August lock due to battery and not lasting long. So you use Vivint Smart Lock. Yes. That lasts much longer. And yes, <laughs> incredibly much longer, especially comparatively. And ring camera is set separately at the side and not in the front lock. And, and that would also have a battery challenge. Yes, the ring camera, correct. So there's a separate power requirement for the camera and a separate network. Plus the ring camera has a single point of failure. And that's usually what anything that when I'm talking to you guys about a system, it's about efficiency and single points of failure. So we're working to avoid those. So every, I'm trying to make sure I say this correctly, nearly every system that you're buying in piecemeal, uh, a lot of people come to me and say, well, Jay, I got this for cheaper and this is cheaper and this is cheaper. Okay, wonderful. You saved there, but you're going to spend more time either changing batteries, even if you set them up on the system, and you're going to spend more time with disconnects because you have a single point of failure. And what I simply mean by that is, um, one of the reasons we recommend and have continually recommended uh, Vivint is because every system has a backup network as well. So even if the guest unplugs, tampers with, or thinks they're getting away with disabling your system by, like I said, unplugging it or turning off the internet or something, system keeps going. Now, obviously it can't go forever with no power, but it does keep going, right? It's usually eight, nine hours where it can keep going. And then it notifies you that something has happened, giving you time to actually correct it or your staff. So there are so many advantages when you're trying to run a very efficient, uh, what I would call a very efficient, well-run system, especially around security, that you just, that just wasn't possible. And especially once you start including the scaling components that are possible as well. But again, that, which is why we ended up working with them so much. That's why we ended up developing packages and discounts and all that other stuff. It's because like, wow, this is the answer to all of the concerns, right? So Sean, if you haven't already reached out to my wife, Poppy Massey, she's in the Facebook group, make sure you do, because as you go down the vivid rabbit hole, so they speak, um, you're going to want to take advantage of what we've already set up for you guys. All right. Uh, Aaron says new student and just got my first house due to do arbitrage with. Okay. Uh, through air DNA, my area gives me a B plus. Does that rating hold any weight? Got it. Um, like all ratings, um, it's always subject to how the data collection methods are. And I don't know your area cause you just said, yeah, you didn't tell me, you just said your area. So I don't really know where geographically you are and you're not actually going to know until you've been in that area for uh, operating in that area for about 12 months. Here's what I will say in general, though. Uh, I know for a fact, Scott, um, that's the CEO's name uh, of AirDNA, they, they've done a lot of work, Scott and his team, have done a lot of work to get better data collection and uh, so much so that if you can scroll back through some of these videos and you can see me totally like trash, like don't touch AirDNA because that's exact, that was my position. They, they made some changes and now I actually pay for and use them. And, and so that we're clear, it's not like I'm getting paid to say any of this. <laughs> okay. It's just what I needed, um, for, for my own business. And there's still some other issues that I can deal with when, in terms of their data. Um, but at the end of the day, they can give you a great baseline. So I tend to put a lot of weight in their trend data more than their absolute number. So if you're looking at anything that's an absolute, like, hey, that means your ref par is going to be this, or your daily rate is going to be this, or your vacancy and occupancy is going to be this. I don't necessarily, I, you know, that's great. And what I really care about is the trend. They're really good at telling you 
when high or low season might be. They're really good at helping you identify what could be your, some of your compression weekends and nights, which is great. Um, but as far as giving you an exact number in some cases, they still have some ways to improve in that particular area. So hopefully, Aaron, that totally helps you. All right. Woo. We have a, well, we have another caller, it seems. Uh, so we definitely want to make that happen. But uh, I'm going to make sure that I haven't missed something here. And I have. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's right, Umer. So, uh, Umer, you said my parents' basement is a place where I'd like to run a short-term rental model. Should I just speak to the HOA first or just do it? Got it. So, uh, Umer, and again, I'm assuming I'm pronouncing it correctly. If I'm not, I apologize. At the end of the day, we run everything that we talk about is 100% transparent, above board, documented. What does that mean? It means a couple of things in the case of what you're saying. Um, well, it has come to mean that typically HOAs are something that we avoid, period. Now, does that mean you can't work with an HOA? No, doesn't mean that. It means, first, you need to get a copy of what are known as the CCNRs, okay, so that you can find out what, exactly what the uh, HOA says. Now, if my guess is right, most of them are going to have some sort of either 28 or 30 day limit, meaning they can't have uh, people staying for less than 28 days or less than 30 days, et cetera. Okay. So this is where you're presented with your first choice. Your first choice is, okay, does that mean then if I'm going to do this, am I going to run a 30 day model? Meaning I'm only going to use this space, this particular space as a model that only does 30 days minimum at a time. That is the first choice. Second is if you still are insistent on uh, running something contrary to what the CCNR say, now it's time for a conversation, right? To figure out why is it there? Is it possible to change that? They could be, it is possible, not likely, but possible that they could be considering changing that. There are some, not many HOAs across the United States anyway, that are specifically cater to the short-term rental model. Now, uh, the only way you're going to find that out, though, is, again, going starting with the CCNRs. So that's your first step. And, and once you figure that out, you need to take another step back. And, again, I, am, I don't know if you're a student right now. I'm sorry. I just don't know. Um, but if you are, I would go to the Mastermind Product Module 1 because you need to make sure that – who you are looking to serve is going to fit, be in alignment with the particular property type that you're considering. Okay. So all of those things are things that I would do. Hey, and here's the good news. It's recorded. So you can hit that rewind button. All right. Um, I had, a, I think there's a person on the phone. Let me pull up my, uh, boo. There we go. What? <laughs> you don't, Got it. All right. Uh, let me see. This is looks like Morgan in North Carolina. I get a lot of North Carolina people today. I kind of like it. That's where I'm from, guys. It's all good. Uh, Morgan, how are you doing? Hi. Hi, Jay. I'm doing good. I hope you are. So far. So um, my question, I'm still such a newbie, and I hear all these people like, I have this many units, and I, I don't have any units yet, but I have a question about financing. So um, okay. I asked in the Facebook group, too. I had a couple people answer, but I want to know your perspective. I'm in a situation okay. where I, my bills are extremely low. I don't even have a full-time job right now. My living situation is, is very fortunate, and I'm wanting to go ahead and get started with short-term rentals. I've you know, obviously educated myself enough, and I'm prepared to get started, but I still don't understand the best way to go in terms of my financing. I, it's hard for me to wrap my head around the idea that I can literally find investors to be able to start rent, leasing out apartments. I mean, not apartments, um, the units. I, I just don't – maybe I need to go back to the cash flow or the uh, – what is it? The, the other course about cash, um, uh, being able to find investors and uh, uh, raise capital. But I'm just not really sure about somebody in my situation. What would you do to be able to get started the quickest? Because I was under the impression I needed to go get a full-time job, you know, finance it that way and just get started that way. But if I can kind of shortcut that, I would love to know, you know, how. Interesting. I hope that makes sense. I think so. May I ask you a couple of questions, though? At the yeah. Okay. 
How young are you? I'm 25. Ah, got it. Now this is making sense. Okay, got it. And um, so have you ever held an, an actual job then or no? Yeah, I have. But I, I basically, I started like bartending and doing like little gigs and stuff so I could kind of maintain myself. I hate nine to five. I, don't, I just don't like having like somebody tell me where to be at what time. So I found other ways to make money to keep myself afloat. So, okay, then I'm just, so that I'm, so that I can have context, then how do you support, how do you eat today? Because <laughs> food ain't free. <laughs> I, I had money saved up. I just was really smart with my money. I have help from certain people. Like, it's, I'll just keep, I'll, like, do little gigs, like, literally, like, DoorDash or Uber or bartending gigs and things like that. Yeah. Just to kind of pay, yeah, just because my bills are so low. I'm not really in a situation okay. where I'm in dire need, but I want to go ahead and get a business started so I don't have to rely on those gigs anymore. Oh, I, I, I'm all about it. All right. <laughs> I'm sure everybody understands. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, all right. So here's, here's where I'm coming from. You, yeah. you don't need a job, but you need a source of income. Does that make right. sense? Well, okay. yeah, I guess what I'm saying is like right now, I'm, I don't understand if I need to go get a full-time job to be able to start leasing apartments. A lot of people were telling me, well, yeah, you, it depends on. Why the- do you need that? Why do you believe currently that you would need to go get a full-time job? I don't know because I'm I just, I, I, the I, only I, time I've. Mm-hmm. Why do you think you need to? Who said that? I guess I was just under the impression that, you know, when you go to sign a lease, they're like, they want to make sure that you have income coming in. Like if you, I, I don't know. I've never signed a lease by, lease by myself, to be honest. Got I was it. always with my mom in college. Like I was like, a, she was the co-signer. So I didn't really, it. it wasn't me by myself. Got it. Now th- this is starting to take shape and make a whole bunch of sense. Now okay. there's an operative word in what you just said that makes a ton of sense and that a lot of people who are listening right now are, are going to learn a lot from it's the word assume, right? It's what it, it, sometimes it's what we assume and then become confident of without ever actually having research that can sometimes shipwreck us. Here's what I mean by that. Um, Cause in the same way that you're like, man, I, I'm, I'm income challenged. There are people who are, who are credit challenged. They're like, man, I got, no one's going to rent to me because I have this, right? Um, which is, well, okay, that, that's just a fact. That's what's so, that's there. And it's also irrelevant. Here's why. And, and, I'm going to, and it's going to sound like I'm going all the way around, but I'm trying to make sure you get the concept as well and so that you can carry it forward so that the next time you hit an obstacle, you'll be able to deal with it. At the end of the day, let's pretend for a second, Morgan, that you, you, were, you went to the emergency room, your arm was like literally bleeding gushing blood. Okay. And you needed assistance. The only doctor there or the only one there in a lab coat is willing to assist you. Do you ask that doctor or ask that person if they got what grade they got in biology? No. You care at that. Okay. Do you care what their credit score is at that moment? No. Uh, Do you care how much money they have in the bank at that moment? No. Or their salary? Or where they went to school? Does any of that matter? No. No. At that moment, the only thing that matters is that you believe he or she can solve your problem. Correct? Right. Absolutely. So your job is to understand the problem for the customer. So your customer in this case, when you're talking about leasing a property is a landlord. What is the problem? So I'm in that pop quiz. What is the problem that landlords face? They have a vacancy they need to fill. Correct. Vacancy is a problem. It's their greatest expense. And what is yours? What is, what solution are you offering as vacant uh, as a, as to that, to their vacancy issue? fill the vacancy. vacancy. Yeah. yeah. You absolutely are. So what matters is can you solve their problem? Do you know how to? Oh, I didn't ask you if you'd done it. I said, do you know how to? Yes. Excellent. Understand. And when you can keep the conversation right there, that's what matters. Now, now that we're there, they may ask for capacity because that's what we're talking about. 
They want to know that you have the capacity to actually solve it. It's one thing to say it. Can you prove to me that you have the capacity to do so? This is where, and again, not all the time, but this is where they may ask for some sort of either verification of either an income or a, 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 a big stack of cash stored somewhere that can be deployed in order to make this happen. Does that make sense? Yes. So you got now, now the question is, is which do you have? You are, you, well, you're admitting I don't have a stream of income, but at the same time you're saying I have a pot of cash and I know that I can raise capital to have an even bigger pot of cash if need be. So let's uh, see, you're in North Carolina. What is, uh, and again, I, I just don't know what I don't know. What is a, a one bedroom rent out there? 800, 900? Yeah, about 900 to a band, to a thousand. I said a band, <laughs> a thousand. Okay, so now let's pretend for a second. You had, I'm making up numbers, but let's pretend you had $50,000 sitting in the bank and you're sitting in front of a landlord and saying, hey, Mr. Landlord, I would like a lease for 12 months. I have $50,000 currently sitting in the bank and here's what I intend to do with the, the, the property. Now, can he, that does one year... Of, of rent, is that more or less than $50,000 in this case? Less. Do you see where I'm coming from now? Yeah. yeah. So, thank you for breaking it down. I don't know why I didn't think of it that way. There's like a limiting belief that people weren't going to want to like work with the newbie real estate investor or something. Like, why would, you know, it's a, it's a limiting belief situation. I get what you're saying, yeah. though. One hundred percent. And that's exactly you, you, this conversation is exactly why we are doing the presentation that uh, on, on what day is that Thursday. But this is exactly why we're doing the presentation, because the many you're not the only one who has this type of limiting thing that is in their way that they can't see. But because they can't see it, you couldn't see a way around it at all until you. Stop until someone guides you through a process and then helps you through that process. And that's what this is literally what I do, right, is to help people see their way around some of the things that feel like roadblocks. And now for you, that roadblock has been removed and you will encounter another one. And that's OK. The, what 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 matters is that as you continue to to become a bigger, better, better version of you how you choose to respond to that. Do you just, because most people, when they take that, that roadblock, and here's something I want to commend you for. You must understand this, Morgan. This is huge. There are so many adults right now who are listening to you who are in some way jealous because at 25, they wish someone would have removed something as simple as this roadblock for them so that they could have made more progress sooner. And you just now got it. And there are some adults, some, many of them, who, when they encounter a roadblock, they interpret that as, oh, well, I need to go get a job first. Then I can. And what ends up happening is they sell all of their time, their most valuable asset, and then they get stuck in a job before they've had a chance to let this new asset grow. You have a very unique opportunity in front of you, young lady, because you, as you said, my expenses are low and fortunate situation, all of these things. Um, you just need to, to, to unlock that and follow and go and keep asking the questions that you're asking, because this is, this is the type of stuff that puts you in a completely different position by the time you see 25, uh, 31, 32 ish, that, that changes whatever you're, you're thinking, you know, was in your future, right? And understanding how to become a person or of resource of, 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 yeah, of answers, a way to deliver a product or service to the marketplace. It's going to change the direction of your life. Did you happen to go to college? Yeah, I did. I got a degree in public relations. So degree in what? Did you say <laughs> public public relations. relations. That's I mean, cool. no, it wasn't useless. I, I'm like a brainiac. I like to self-educate. I think I could have. Use it or Got it. A little bit better than. That's good. So, from what it sounds like, you said I need to go get on this capital creators course, pretty much, because I'm not gonna lie, I kind of skimmed through it. I didn't really take it as seriously as I did the um the blueprint and the mastermind. 
so I guess if I just go through that, I'll kind of increase my knowledge on how to go after, once I find that yeah. deal, how to get the funds. Yeah, uh, but basically what Capital Creators will lay out for you is it'll introduce you to the concept of raising capital. It'll introduce you to the problem <laughs> that you're solving for investors when you're raising capital. It'll then uh, help you understand things like the deal structures and give you a system, a marketing system, for lack of a better way of putting it, of how to make sure that you constantly have a flow of investors um, so that when a opportunity presents itself, you have, a, you have access to enough capital to, to make it happen. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Thank you so much, Jay. I really appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. That's uh, what we do. Oh, I and have uh, one more question. It's super quick. Okay. Go what for it. You, um, like the difference between renting and owning in um, the STR business, which I remember you saying renting is actually better, I think, because of ta- the time factor. But is that really the only benefit you would say? No, like, no, I know no. Both no. Are, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, there, there are many benefits. And for the majority of the individuals who are looking at getting involved in real estate investing in general, the biggest benefit is that it's the, it's the biggest benefit is the actually the experience component because oftentimes what happens with individuals is that they save up, you know, their half million, quarter million, hundred thousand, whatever, and then they go buy a property. And then on that property, that's when their experience really begins. Uh, and after they've taken a uh, hundred thousand time to save a hundred thousand dollars, and uh, committed to a, a a mortgage of some kind. So now that they're and now they're they're kind of stuck. They got to make this okay. thing work. And that's, in my opinion, I interpret that as very risky. Whereas you can take that same hundred thousand dollars, and by leasing the property, you, you limit your risk. And what happens is that you gain the experience. So and through that process, the short term rental system that we talk about phase one and phase two specifically allow you to build up a, a machine that produces that hundred thousand dollars on a more frequent basis so that now that you have the experience, you now have the experience and the cash and what you can now go do is you can go buy any type of real estate that you want so that you're in a position to properly operate it. Does that make sense? Totally. So essentially start with renting because of those factors. And then, you know, later, once you have the experience in the capital creation, you can, um, or capital flow, you can go ahead and start looking into owning. Yeah, that's the entire point. That's exactly. So it's phase, what we call phase one, phase two, then over to phase three. And we have some phase three students um, as well, obviously. And we've got students in all of the phases. You're at the phase one stage and that's, that, that makes perfect sense. But that's exactly but that's exactly it. And keywords to reference back to what we've been talking about. The at each of those stages, you you will encounter completely different roadblocks that feel like, how am I going to get to how do I get past this one? And that's one of the biggest reasons you want to continue to take advantage of the Facebook group and show up to these so that you can get your questions answered. And if for some reason uh, one of the experienced operators in the group didn't give you an answer you liked or you just want to confirm it or whatever. That's why I've been committed. I don't even know how many years we've been doing this, but we've been doing this for a number of years <laughs> to help people get past whatever it is. Cause I don't want nobody stuck. Like, right. nope. Thank you so much, Jay. I appreciate you so much. Like really. You're welcome. No problem. Now, now the only thing I'm going to ask you to do is to go do something. The thing yes. that'll get on my nerves I'm gonna get is my if, butt, yes. Next week, you ask me the same question. He ain't made right. no progress. So right. don't be doing that. Understood. Go, all right. Cool. All right. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Let me get back into the Facebook group and see what other questions we got. Oh, we got a little bit. Of, we don't have much time left. Let's see what's going on. And again, everybody, uh, we if you you just heard the conversation that I just had with Morgan, that type of conversation and more. So just imagine you, you imagine if you had someone who has trained, mentored, and taken people from five to six to seven figures, guiding you through a process that helps you implement what we give you. That's literally what we're talking about. Because it's not just, many of us know exactly what to do, but we don't do it. But having someone guide us through and hold us accountable to getting through that process, 
oh my god it's it's like it's like everything and in fact here's the thing that you may not be thinking about that i know that i am because it's it's literally it's on my phone um it, it is 92 days 92 days left in this year at the end of those 92 days many of you are going to make a promise to yourself this year i'm going to make more money well if you want to make that promise come true you're going to come to cashflowdiary.com forward slash action. That's what you're going to do, right? You're going to make sure that you get over there, you register, because the answer to adding that zero is to becoming a bigger, better you, right? It's not just about getting more information. You got to understand that there's this knowing and doing because to do, or sorry, to know and not do is to not know. Trust me on that one for sure. All right. Let me find the other questions that are in here. Okay, there they are. All right. Uh, what is that? Uh, Brian Dillon says, what, a, what about if Vivian is not available? I don't know what you mean by that. I, um, the, mm, are, you, are you outside the United States, Brian? Is that what you're saying? It, I mean... Yeah. Here's what I'm going to say, Brian, because I, I just I don't have you on the phone or anything. Um, what I would do is that I would get uh, contact my wife again. Her name is Poppy, P-O-P-I, Massey. She's on Facebook. She's in the Facebook group. Ask her. She can probably dig down deeper and help you and help that because I, I don't really know. Uh, Susan, several years, Jay, you've been doing these live q and A for several years. And Susan, you've been here for like all of those years. That's amazing, too, as well. All right. Uh, let me see. Okay. We've got some more questions here. Is that Peter? PJ. That is Peter. Been a long time. <laughs> hey, PJ. How are you doing? Oh, man. That's awesome. Uh, Shanna. Oh, boy. This is long. So let, let's read this together, guys. Let's read this one together. All right. It says, I started connecting Logify to VRBO and booking.com and realized that with it, I connected, I cannot continue to have payments processed by those platforms, right? Payments will be switched to my payment processor, Stripe. Yes, I know there have been lots of problems with payments previously that are now solved by VRBO and booking.com doing the payments. Am I going to have payment problems if I connect to Logify and start using, start doing all payments through Stripe what are you doing with your business on that subject? Excellent. And you just did on Shanna the very reason why I'm going real slow. So as, of, as it sits at this exact moment, okay, um, we are using every version of a basic connection you could possibly imagine because I am wanting to avoid being the one processing the, the payments specifically for the reservation now for additional services, all that other stuff. Great, we'll do that. But for the reservation in and of itself, we are currently avoiding that at all costs. So that's what we're doing. Uh, Ladero says, what is this? He says, right, listening to CFD podcasts have become a part of the morning routine. Oh, wow. That's um, scary. <laughs> I'm like, what did I say? Hopefully we said something good. Um, Ladero, thank you for the compliment. I like it. I like it. Uh, let's see. It says, hey, Jay, when you are presenting in B&I for your future presentation and there are property managers in the room, what main points do you hit upon? Got it. Property managers get hit up with stuff that they don't want to do, right? The easiest business you can ever get is to ask for the business that people are throwing away, right? Meaning if a property manager is all about long-term rentals, just ask them, do any of your owners ever ask you to do short-term rentals? They'll have an opinion about it, and based upon their opinion, you'll know how to proceed, right? Uh, or ask a realtor even, right? Uh, because it, <laughs> they get asked all the time, do you know a place where I can stay for two months? Realtors don't have an answer. You can become their referral sources in, in, a, in a very strong way. So highlighting how you work with other people um, and doctor's offices, et cetera, makes it easy for you. How you solve landlord's vacancy, as we were talking earlier in this particular chat. Those are the things that I tend to focus on for the most part. Mark Hill, looking for the best options to 
finance short-term rental since I can't secure with first position due to credit scores. Business credit is building slowly. Got it. Mark, um, in the blueprint, okay, there is a module and it is called financing. Um, we specifically go through three different financial structures uh, that I, there are only three that I recommend. Um, there is a bonus one, but I tend to save that one for, it doesn't matter until you're in phase two and three. So we, we don't really talk about that one much, but inside the blueprint, there is, you, you have access to that already. Okay. So what I would do is I would go uh, watch those three modules. And then the next question you're going to ask me is how do I raise the capital? And then I'm going to, and if you're a mastermind student, you have access to capital creators, again, 16 hours of information, literally of how to do exactly that. Okay. Um, let's see. <laughs> Ladero says he just purchased a book on audible. He's got lots of credits to use. That's great. Yeah. I've been signed, man signed up for that, that audible two a month thing so long ago, like long ago. Right. And yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It's a great way to make things happen. So, um, good. And thank you for buying the book. Uh, I didn't know if that would happen. And Carol says, what time and what address are you speaking? Good question. Let me see if I can, I should be able to look that up real fast. At least I think I can. Um, yes. It's going to be, uh, oh man, this is, let me see, pull up my screen and do this number right there. So where am I speaking tomorrow? Tomorrow I am pulling it up now. And it is, come on, there we go. There it is. Tomorrow, it looks like it's 7 p.m., and the address is Courtyard, L.A., Pasadena Old Town, 180 North Fair Oaks Avenue, Pasadena, 91103. I guess you got to go to meetup.com or something to get the tickets, but you see how this works. So tomorrow, 7 to 9. Um, I think it's going to be a, like probably it's going to end up being a really large Q&A. That's, that's my guess. Um, because that's typically what happens because there's just too much to cover. <laughs> there's just always too much to cover. All right. Um, let me see. Uh, what time Thursday? Oh, great question, Mark. I can't believe I didn't do that. So if you, for those of you who are coming and want to know about the presentation that we're doing on Thursday, you're going to go to cashflowdiary.com. Cat, let me do that again. It's cashflowdiary.com forward slash action. When you get there, it's going to look like this. Okay. And there it goes. It's going to look like that. And you're going to put in your name and your email address right there. And as you can see, it says Thursday, October 3rd, uh, 11 a.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific time. So uh, obviously the presentation is done in English. Uh, for those of you who are watching in our other countries, and um, so that you gotta gotta be able to speak English, please, because otherwise it's gonna be a problem. And uh, for but at the end of the day, personal development re applies. Uh, becoming a bigger, badder version of yourself applies regardless of nationality, language you speak, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, because I, I can assure you, one hundred percent growing up at the kitchen table, um, the, 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 that was not the conversation. Okay. That, that's nothing good or bad about how I grew up. It's just, it wasn't part of our conversation. Right. You know, um, and at the end of the day, if you want to become the, that same thing that we're talking about, you're going to need to surround yourself with individuals, um, to whom that that is a part of the, of their everyday conversation. All right. So, and, and, and to drive that point home, I want to, I want to really, I'm going to do something I normally don't do. Okay. I really, I, I can't even believe I'm going to do this. 
Um, but I'm going to show you guys something right now. Here's what I know, right? And again, uh, I'm going to share my screen. Part of the reason that you, you want to be there is because when it comes down to it, what you're like, what you're looking at right now, the number that I want you to, let me see, how do I highlight that number? I want that number. I want to write on that document on that number. So I'm trying to figure out how to do it. Is it, yeah, you see the screen, right? Nope, that's not what I was after. Anyway, um, with that number, the 818-544-11, that is just uh, from the short-term rental side of my world, okay? And I'm sharing that because it's due to personal development, right? And that's, again, that's just you know, like year-to-date. Except, well, it's not even year-to-date. It's through August. I'm saying this with the knowledge that I know that that number is probably about 200000 lower than it would have been because we've been going, we've been moving units, we've been growing, we've been doing a lot of things. I'm actually looking at that and going, oh, I'm not doing as well as I wanted to, right? And that's because I've been exposed to my potential. I know what that looks like today. And it's because of understanding that, that I am urging you to come to the presentation because I want that for you as well. Get more faster, period, all right? Get more faster. See, I I know that that number should be about $200,000 higher. I know that, I know that we're capable of that. I also know that we, we increased our expenses, or sorry, not our expenses, but our number of units um, over this last summer which I know that that's what ate up all of the quote unquote profit, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. But I know that, but I, and I'm okay with it because when I am not in expansion mode, you guys understand what that means, right? You get what I'm saying and what I'm, what I, and I'm saying this not because you having more units is going to make me more money. That, that has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with the quality of life that I want you to have. That's literally why Cashflow Diary exists, is to help you do that type of thing, okay? Um, Where am I going? Uh, Let me look, questions, you are, you are, I am. Did you see my question, Jay? Yes, Shanna, I did see your question. I believe I answered it. And who's this silly? Aguirre just says, hi, Aguirre, I think. All right, making sure of checking one last time. This is your shot. Do I have a, oh, let me check for phone calls. I don't think there's any. Yep, no phone calls. All right, so this is your shot. We are going to come in for a landing here shortly. Um, Susan says, done and registered. I love it. Mark uh, seems to be registered. Who else is registered? I'm kind of curious, actually. <laughs> so if you've already gone over to cashflowdiary.com forward slash action, if you've gone over to casualdiet.com forward slash action and have registered already, like drop an emoji in the comments. You like with that, I think there's one with the hand that raised up. Drop that emoji because I really want to, I'm kind of curious to see who that is uh, already because that's pretty awesome, guys. Uh, that tells me that you're eager uh, for the information and you understand the importance of becoming a bigger, better, badder version of yourself. So, um, Oh, Brian, now I see you're in Puerto Rico. I don't, I don't know if Vivint goes to Puerto Rico. I, I see. So what you're saying is if Vivint's not available because you're in Puerto Rico, what do you do? Got it. Now I understand. One, um, I, first thing I'm going to do is talk to my wife, make sure, confirm that they're not available in Puerto Rico. Number two, um, if they weren't available, that's a really good question. Um, I am not sure that I have a plan B for that, for that already. Because again, in most cases, let me work on that. Come back next week, Brian. I will figure it out. That's what I will do. Okay. And Iko says, oh, <laughs> okay, got it. Iko, David, you guys are putting the hand up. I like it. Perfect. And then, hey, Marcy, how are you doing? Uh, so I appreciate you guys, you know, taking the time. 
uh, to, to, to be here. I appreciate you caring about your own personal growth and um, just understanding that at the end of the day, like I said at the beginning, you and I, we can't out earn our own personal growth. We just, it's not physically possible for us to make that happen. Um, and having a plan for growing personally makes all the difference. And that's totally up to you. And I know sometimes it can feel like, well, I just want to get down to the business. I want to get down to talking to landlords and doing all these things. And the late Stephen Covey would clearly tell you to sharpen the saw. The more time that you can sharpen that saw so that you only have to cut one time, the better. But at the same time, I know that Jeff Olson would say that you, you can't stay stuck in just gathering information. You have to go out there and apply. And there's a cycle to it. Understanding how, how that works, understanding how you learn, understanding the roadblocks that are customized, that have been customized, that the world has customized specifically for you, makes all the difference. And, and that's really what I'm trying to say to you, right? I know a number of you, 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 you want more. And the whole goal is that we're going to help you. We, we're literally intentionally helping you to get more faster. And all you got to do is get over to cashflowdiary.com forward slash action. We'll be there to assist you. Uh, I'm looking forward to helping you. For those of you that I see tomorrow in Pasadena, uh, look forward to it. Awesome. Great. Come say hi. And for those of you that uh, I see you on Thursday, can't wait uh, to, to help you there too. Because I know I'm excited. You think I'm excited about it? We're going to be talking to Brian Matson. Now, I know that may, may not mean much to you today, but for those of you, who not only show up and, and choose to work with him, those, you guys, that name is going to become synonymous with, here's the guy that gave me the keys to the kingdom and allowed me to actually become the biggest, baddest version of myself such that we can now do this. And those are the things that, that it comes down to. And there's such a thing because, again, we can all labor and I, many of you know that I can't stand people who say, ooh, you got lucky, right? But to some degree we do, because all of us, once we learn to apply ourselves and labor under correct knowledge, if you look at the first word or letters of those, you'll understand. But as we labor under correct knowledge, we can develop our own luck. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been fun talking to you guys today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.